Hey there, welcome to the channel. This is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. In this video, I'm gonna share some music production tips and techniques while recreating SZA's Kill Bill. Let me show you the end result and I'll walk you through every step of the process. I really love the drum feel and the tone and texture of this record. When I listen to the reference track, it has a lo-fi vintage type of vibe, and I'm really into that. So and there's many different approaches when you're working on music. You can find drum loops that already capture that vibe and sound and just kind of manipulate the overall pattern and, and fit it to the way you like it. You can use drum samples from different sample libraries to get there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recreate the, the texture and the vibe and the feel from scratch using XLN Audio's Addictive Drums 2. So I'm gonna start with that here. And what we're doing is we're going with the modern soul and RB. I literally, the way I go about this is I'm listening to my reference. I just kind of browse through drum kits that I might already have in my existing library that just get as close as possible. And I listen particularly to the snare drum of a drum kit. That, because I think that's the, the tone and that stands out the most. And so if I can narrow down the, the snare drum to getting as close as possible to the reference, that's a good place to start. So I'm starting off with the very first preset in the modern soul and R&B. And as we go into editing the kick, I'm just kind of lowering the level of our hi-hat and our room mic. But I'm gonna walk you through all this first. So first let's go ahead and take off some of the processing. And more than just the right sound selection, especially for using acoustic drums, um, like this, and you're trying to program your drums, meaning you're trying to actually record your own drum pattern, which is the reason why I'm doing it this way, because I want to have the freedom to add fills and change up the pattern that I probably wouldn't be able to get with just a fixed eight bar loop. Now, when doing this, it really comes down to the MIDI performance and how you um, are really adjusting all the MIDI performance here to capture all the nuances of real drums. So I think the drummer was, you know, this must have been a real drummer. It was tracked and recorded because the feel is just so good. So here is the actual drum pattern. Now there are two important things that you need to keep in mind when adjusting your program drums to get more of a humanistic or organic type of feel from them, especially when you're using an acoustic drum plugin. Those are adjusting your velocity, and the overall grid timing. Now with velocity, that's where you get most of the humanistic feel because not every note or not every drum, whether it's a snare, kick, or a hi-hat, is going to be playing at the same volume throughout the whole pattern. You wanna have some fluctuations there because that's what a natural real drummer would be doing if you were recording a drummer. So for instance, in this pattern, we can hear that some hi-hats just seem a little bit louder than others. That's because I'm going manually through some of the hi-hats and adjusting the velocity. In Ableton Live, I can hit the command button, hover over each note. It'll show me that this velocity is at 37, this one's at 54, this one's 62. So I can accent or just bring up velocity on one note by just hovering over it, clicking on it, and then scrolling up or down. You can also see how the velocity is adjusting down below. So if I really wanted this one to stand out, I will raise the velocity higher than the ones that are surrounding this note. And that's good because it gives that nice little pickup note before the snare drum happens. So I might do this a little bit, the first snare. So I'll just go around adjusting the velocity. And then secondly, I wanna make sure that I'm actually nudging certain notes off the grid. Having the notes snap right on the grid, which will normally happen if you were drawing in your notes or double clicking and you're placing notes wherever you want them, it will just be too stiff. So as you can see, I've got this kick drum a little bit ahead of the beat, the snare drum also, um, and then this one's a little ahead, and some notes would be a little bit um, behind, and this just creates more of a humanistic feel to it. Also, there's velocity layering that you also want to take advantage of when using an acoustic drum kit. 
such as when one snare note is overlapping another snare note, you get this really cool flam effect. So for instance, here we have D1, which is triggering that snare. And I'm then going to play E1, E1 just slightly after that. And since these two notes are overlapping, you'll get a really cool flam effect. So I'll just move this over a little bit. There you go, like that. So you have that nice little cool flam that happens. And uh, it just adds a little bit of that nuance that you would normally capture when recording a drummer. Well, now that I've got the drum groove the way I like it, got the velocity adjusted and the timing of the drums placed where I like them, I'm now gonna focus on the tone and texture. And as I listen to the reference, it's got this really cool lo-fi, vintage -y type of vibe. And the first plugin I'm gonna gravitate towards is Overdrive. I love just placing Overdrive or distortion plugins directly onto my acoustic drum kit. It just enhances it so much. So. Let me go ahead and play you the drums without the overdrive. So yeah, it just, not only is it just getting louder, but we're adding the texture and the details that I like that the overdrive does. And if you're following along using Logic or any other DAW, try using a distortion pedal that you have. A lot of the stock plugins in Logic and DAWs are just amazing. This is the stock Ableton Live Overdrive that I'm using. Then I'm gonna to move towards compression. And why do I want compression? Well, I just, I wanna smooth out a little bit of the initial hit that I'm hearing from the snare in comparison to the kick. So I will just browse through different compressors, different types of compressors, and just see which one feels or makes the drum feel the way I'm, I'm, I wanna vibe with them. And I think that's really, at the end of the day, the best reason as to choosing the compressor. It's not necessarily because this is the one everybody else is using. It's like, this is the one that's drawing out the vibe that I'm really liking or that it kind of just brings out the emotion that I'm looking for with these drums. So for that, I'm using the CLA 76. It's an 1176 plugin by Waves. And I'll turn this on and walk you through uh, what it's doing. So like without the compression, each element, although it doesn't sound like, it doesn't really need compression, but what happens is without the compression, the kick and snare and hat, they just seem so separated. And then when I put the compression on, they just felt glued and like they were, they actually like one family. So I'll play it again without the compression and then I'll put it on. So I'm not trying to do anything too crazy. I'm just adjusting the dial, uh, the input, which is the threshold of this compressor, the attack, um, you know, pretty slow because I don't want it to be too pumping. I don't want it to be too evident that this thing's being compressed and a really quick release. And that's, that's where I have it set. And I was going back and forth with different type of plugins to help really create that retro vintage type of vibe. So initially I started with cassette plugin by uh, Waves Factory. And this did okay. And then I was bouncing between this and the RC20. So I'm gonna do that with you here and you can kind of see why I decided to land with the one I landed. And then I'm gonna open up the RC20, which uh, has a bit more, um, got some distortion, a bit more control over how I want to shape the tone. So I like the warmth I was getting from the RC20. I could probably do that here with the cassette, but I, I landed with the RC20 just because I was able to just kind of adjust the EQ and get a little bit more wobble, uh, more, more stereo. You know, it's just messing around with the, the pitch and detuning stereo wise. And so I, I just landed here with the RC20 and we're gonna add a little bit of drum bus plug in here from Ableton Live and mostly just using the transit designer. I want a little bit more sustain from these drums. 
and I have this set at 24%. I just wanted to take this time to remind you that I created Beat Academy as the resource to provide you the mentorship and professional guidance that you need to take your next step with your music. If you're serious about wanting to produce your own music and you're looking for that guidance to help you do that, well, I definitely want to encourage you to visit beatacademy.com. As a matter of fact, I have a free course that walks you through every step of producing your first song. It's yours absolutely free. Visit beatacademy.com slash produce to get access to this course right away. This will walk you through how do you get the ideas you have in your head out there into the world using the very own stock, even the DAW that comes loaded with your computer. We have uh, the whole course walks through GarageBand, but you can easily apply the principles to any DAW that you are using. So beatacademy.com slash produce and join this free course today. All right, let's get back to the lesson. Now, oftentimes we've got, this will be my foreground layer. This is, we've got our drum kit, and now I'm gonna layer this. So what I've done is I literally just dragged and dropped the whole pattern, just like this, onto an empty MIDI track, double clicked it, and I got rid of all the hi-hat patterns, the snare patterns, just like this. And I'm gonna go focus in on, let's say the snare drum here, and this over here. And now I've got just the kick drum pattern. And I'll take this up a couple octaves, holding shift and up. And what this gives me the ability to do is drag and drop any kick drum that I like that I can layer with the drum. So that's what I've done here. I've got the kick drum separated. So I've got now the kick drum and the acoustic drum kit put together. And this is what we get. So yeah, having that kick layered with the drum kit just subtly just gives back that nice bottom end um, that I really was missing when I started, you know, making the, the acoustic drum kit a little lo-fi. Now these are grouped together. So we have the kick drum, the acoustic drum kit, all in a drum bus here, and just have a glue compressor to kind of just tie those two elements together. And now for the bass, I'm using IK Multimedia's Moto Bass. This is Moto Bass 1. Still haven't upgraded to the Moto Bass 2 though. And, um, but I'm using the 70s P Bass for this. Not much adjusting, to be honest with you. Just went over to the play style, just muted it a little bit. But this is straight, just selecting the preset and running with this here. Um, similar to what we're doing with the drums, there's also nuances that you wanna do with pretty much all the instrumentation. When you're trying to create a vibe that's very um, indie or just trying to really replicate that organic type of feel, it's all about the MIDI performance. So as you go here, um, I'm, uh, I'm taking some notes off the grid, I'm nudging things, I'm making sure that things aren't stiff because a real bass player won't be doing that. So that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I wanna make sure that all the notes are not stiff on the grid, some are a little bit off, you know, nudging some, the velocity is different on some of the notes. And most importantly, if I go to my MIDI control and I head over to pitch bend, I can then do really nice legato slides from one note to the next, which is what we hear here. actually add notes um, at the tail end of long notes sometimes here as of, as as often it's kind of like this pickup note that goes right before the next note uh, when I'm sustaining notes here so I oftentimes do that the reason why I decided to do that or how I know to do this is because when I record myself playing bass I see the audio of myself playing bass and I'll notice that I notice that sometimes before I transition from one note to the next I'm actually kind of tapping or just playing that that sustain note one more time before going to that. So uh, that's why I'm adding these little notes here at the end sometimes at the sustain notes, because it, it really just mirrors and replicates what I would have naturally done while recording a bass. So 
Those are all little important details and the pitch bend as well. Now, I'm using an EQ to just slightly just take away some of the low mid here of this bass. And especially as it starts climbing up uh, higher in pitch. But I'm adding distortion, and as I listen to the reference, there's this bass has like a really cool growl to it. And it wasn't so much that the distortion was causing it, but there was a nice chorusy effect that just really caused this bass to just kind of um, just become wide and heavy. I think that's just the right word for it. It became a heavy, cool bass. So distortion, and then this chorus directly on there. And so I don't normally put a lot of chorus on basses, but I, I was listening to the reference and I thought, hey, this, this would probably get near to that sound. And more importantly, I just actually really liked what it was doing. So drums and bass alone. Now for the cool melodic part that we hear at the beginning of the song and that plays throughout the song, especially in the chorus as well, what came to my mind was Mellotron flutes. It's got that vintage, unique Mellotron type sound. I'm not necessarily sure if that's what it is. And the goal of this video is not to actually nail down the same exact patch. It's how do I recreate that type of sound? So naturally I went with the Mellotron plugin here from Arturia. Now, it, that works fine, and a really cool trick is just to kind of extend the release so a lot of those tail ends of the notes continue to linger. But there seems to be a problem. I can't reach the higher notes that happen over here that we hear in the sample. So because this is the actual range in which within that sound is going to play. It won't go lower than this note here, and it won't go higher than that note. So how am I going to do this? I love the texture. I love the sound. But how will I get that accomplished? Well, one workaround was to just simply sample. I sampled the C note. So I'll walk you through that. I just Let's just go ahead and create a MIDI region. Shift, Command, M. Let's put C3. Hit the legato note. And this will just play. We'll just have it that length there. And what I simply did was I froze the track. And if you're following along with any DAW, you would simply just bust or just re record or bounce this audio and then have this rendered audio back into your DAW so that it can be triggered via a sampler. Now, now that I froze it, I have an audio track right underneath that. I can just simply drag that down. So here is the actual audio. And so that's the note C, right? So I'm pretty much just resampling or sampling the Mellotron. Now, the reason I'm doing this, and I'm gonna unfreeze this track, is that in this, I've created a MIDI track with a simpler on there with the sample that we just created. And here is that sample. So I'm gonna take the processing off. And now what I'm able to do is play the actual pattern So I can now hit that high note, and I made sure to adjust the velocity a lot lower because as it goes higher in pitch, it actually feels and sounds louder in volume. So I've got that in place, and just to kind of recap what I did, I sampled the note C from the Mellotron, froze it, captured the audio, and put that into a sampler or simpler in Ableton Live so that I could replay it, replay the melody, and have the higher notes that I'm hearing in the reference. So I'm doing that. I'm also copying the same exact MIDI pattern here, dragging and dropping. And I'm using a Juno plugin from Arturia to kind of just uh, mirror, or just kind of just double that as well. And this is a preset number 23, Celesta which is and they're working because I was particularly looking for that kind of 
celestial or celesta type of sound and it literally had it in the name i go well if that's what i'm looking for then that must be it and worked out great and i've got the cassette waves factory plugin directly on there to give it a nice uh cool uh, vibe to it and back to the simpler we have the rc20 to really create the nice warble that we hear in the reference And then I'm using Ableton Live's doubler to really give some nice shifting with the pitch. And then we have a really cool arpeggiated guitar part that's happening throughout the chorus as well, uh, in which I'm using Contact Library, um, the Electric Vintage. It's really cool, and I'm setting it to melody vibes, so that allows me to actually just play the melody uh, without any of the preset strumming patterns. So I'm actually just playing the melody. I uh, use the Cold Lake preset because I thought the tone was pretty good and, and kind of close to that. So that's the guitar part. I was really tempted to record the guitar part in, but I wanted to just kind of accomplish this video just using VST plugins and get as, as close as I could as possible. So we've got the chorus effect directly on there and I'll, I'll take all this off so you can hear it dry. And the chorus is directly onto that, just a little bit of that chorus uh, uh, plugin. And then we have the cassette plugin again because everything is lo-fi-ish, so I want it to have the, the feel and the of running it through cassette tape or just tape in general. And so we've got a couple of the presets here, not a lot of static. I don't like all these tape hissing plugins to just be compounded on one another. So I really want, if I have one that has a little bit of the hiss, that's fine. I'll take the hiss or the static off of all the other ones. I don't need to have continuous static. So that worked out good. Uh, a little bit of EQing, literally just a little bit of EQing there. And that's how we got this. Now, another thing too, I'm also sending this. So you can see here, I have return track A and return track C. On return track A, I've got a delay plugin. And on return track C, we have a doubler, similar to the doubler we used earlier. And so I'm sending a little bit of that to the guitar so that it's just a little bit of that warble or that shift happening with that. So if I take this off, I like having it on the return because I can also use that for other instruments in the track, such as the Juno. I can send a little bit of that warble or that shift over too. So let's see with all the other elements. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. Don't go because I have some pretty amazing stuff to share with you. Uh, if you want this Ableton Live session and you wanted to kind of download it and follow along with this video again, you can do so at beatacademy.com slash pack. If you're already a Beat Academy subscriber, I'm already sending you a link where you can immediately have access to these files. No need to give me your email. I'll send that directly to you already. If you're not getting any of the emails, let my team know at support at beatacademy.com. Check your uh, spam folders. Make sure none of the emails are getting lost in there because not only am I sending you the link to download this pack, but I'm also sending you some great plugins, um, some advice, and a bunch of great things that can help you take your next step with your music production. So. Make sure you go to beatacademy.com slash pack to download that. And if you're already a subscriber, it's in your inbox. Make sure you're getting our emails and staying up to date with what's going on in Beat Academy. Also, as I stated, I have a course that walks you through every step of the process of producing your first song. 
Maybe you've been producing for a while and you're already past that. I want to challenge you to check out this course because there's plenty of cool principles in there that you can always reapply into your workflow. So that's beatacademy.com slash produce. Once again, if you're looking for that mentorship and professional guidance with helping you with your music, then I definitely recommend you visit beatacademy.com and become a Beat Academy member today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.